Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. What is the difference between a bullion and a numismatic coin? Let's explore! That's right. Given the recent controversy over some of the price increases from the United States Mint, there's been a little bit of confusion out there uh, about what is considered a collector coin or a numismatic coin and a bullion coin. So I thought I'd do this video to kind of um, uh, give examples and, and explain the difference. Uh, there is a great difference between and numismatic coins and bullion coins are out there. And what you're looking at before you here is an example, probably the most obvious example of a bullion coin versus a collector coin. You know, bullion coins are uh, essentially uh, money in gold and silver that is distributed for those who want to preserve their wealth with gold and silver. And the examples that you see here towards the center of your screen are bullion examples of coins <clears throat> that you can purchase uh, for a set amount above spot. Typically, it's not a whole lot of money that you pay over spot for those coins. Although, there are some premiums tied to those particular ones that you normally don't see in other bullion coins out there because they're issued by the United States government. And those are some of the most widely recognized bullion coins in the marketplace. So there's a bit more of a markup. But nonetheless, it is a markup that is a very reasonable. And in most cases, that markup um, can be translated at the time of selling uh, these particular pieces. And is recognized to where you may be able to recapture some of um, that markup at the point of sale. That is not always the case and should not be the general rule, but make no mistake, it is uh, much more highly liquid and possible with those particular coins. But essentially, those have a finish that is what is known as a business strike in the industry um, or a, a, a uncirculated uh, business strike. You know, uh, what is referred to, especially if you go to bullion dealers, you'll see the letters BU. Um, uh, tied to those particular finishes of those coins, which essentially means that they are brand new and it is referred to and referenced as brilliant uncirculated. And uh, that is the case with those particular coins. The other coins that you see on the edge here are proof versions of the same coins. And as you can see, they are uh, a lot different looking and they contain... Um, specially finished dyes and blanks to be able to make them really shine and frosted to show the high contrast between the fields and the devices on the coins. The devices essentially refer to the raised areas that are brought out and um, those are the design elements such as the sun on the uh, eagle, the lettering, and the design of um, of Lady of Liberty walking there herself, or the Indian there. Um, so those are the uh, the differences that you can see. Now the other thing that you will notice with the uh, numismatic coins is that though they are the same coins, they contain the same amount and the same composition of gold and silver respectively, they um, uh, are packaged uh, for presentation for collectors. And that is the big difference you know, the term numismatic can really be applied to anything that you accumulate, but it typically it is referenced uh, in relation and in regards to collector pieces. And that's what you see here. And the collector pieces typically have a lower mintage than the their bullion counterparts for obvious reasons, um, even though they may not be necessarily limited by the mint themselves, but because of their higher premiums, people tend to buy less of them, and they, and they do that in such a way. So that lower mintage may or may not reflect itself 
at the point of reselling uh, those particular coins. Uh, but the biggest difference, other than the design and the appearance and the packaging, is the price. You will pay a much higher premium for numismatic coins than you do for bullion. <clears throat> and, uh, and that premium, there's no guarantee that whenever you resell these coins, either um, back to a particular bullion dealer or in the secondary market, there's no guarantee that you will be able to recapture any of that premium. And I'll give you a for instance. This particular coin here is a proof 2010 um, Buffalo, Gold Buffalo. I paid a bullion price for that coin. And uh, that is very uh, common in many cases to see especially for those particular coins and some eagles, proof eagles as well, where you can literally buy the, the collective version for the same price, maybe even a little bit cheaper. Um, and uh, yeah, I've also seen that for some of the proof silver eagles as well, but that's not quite as common to see that. But nonetheless, that's an example that uh, whenever you buy a numismatic product, um, even though it looks very, very nice and it's very attractive and it may have a lower mintage, um, mintage really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of theme, things. It's about demand and uh, the value derived from the demand of the coin. Rarity is, is something that is a misnomer that people get hung up on and they think, well, just because a particular coin is rare, that it's going to be valuable. But that does not have anything to do with the value. It's about the demand for the coin. Now, these are the most extreme examples of, of the coins that are um, what are considered numismatic. I'm going to show you an example here with the Bald Eagle Commemorative Coin uh, program in 2008. And I'm showing you the packaging here as an example that, that it comes in. And this usually comes with the Certificate of Authenticity for these types of coins and relatively fancy packaging here from the United States Mint. This is a proof version of the Bald Eagle commemorative coin. And it's a very nice shiny that you can see here. I'll pull it out of the package here so you can see how beautiful that is. Now there's another collector version here of the Bald Eagle commemorative coin I'm gonna show you that has packaging as well, slightly different, but still, nonetheless, it has packaging as a certificate of authenticity, but it is uncirculated. There you go. This is still a collector coin. <clears throat> and uh, the difference is, is that it looks closer to an American Silver Eagle in terms of the finish, but it's not exactly uh, the same as the American Silver Eagle in terms of the finish. And you can kind of see it there that it is not quite the same. It has sort of a milky matte finish to it. So the uncirculated coin um, typically does uh, have that difference. It is a, a struck with some fine detail and care. And this is what is known as an uncirculated strike. Uh, but also people refer to it as burnished as well. I'm going to get more into that in terms of the American Eagle because that is where a lot of the controversy has come because the United States Mint sells American Eagles with this type of finish. Although this is sort of an exaggerated, they do tend to, at times, have varying levels of frosting and uh, uh, on these uncirculated coins. In fact, if you, um, it's very, in some ways, if you were to mirror the background of this and left the eagle and the device, the way it is here, it's very close to being a proof in terms of the level of frosting, although this is not, not quite as much that you see on the proof version. But the United States Mint has experiment, experimented with and established multiple levels of finishes for their uncirculated coins. And uh, But it is the way that the dyes are treated, the way the blanks are treated, and essentially, you know, the mint mark is something else that is something to be con taken into consideration because the uh, uncirculated American eagles that are uh, met for bullion strikes, the business strikes, they do not have a mint mark on them, even though they may be produced at different facilities. 
but an uncirculated one will have a mint mark, and you'll see that when I show the coin that I'm buying specifically to help further explain this difference. Um, that order has just been placed um, uh, the day that this video has been recorded. But this is an example of two different collector coins with two different finishes and two different price points, but not that much difference in price between the two when they were ordered. Um, but nonetheless, it is still a collector coin, even though it has a closer appearance to a business bullion strike than it does to the proof strike. And you see that with various types of coins out there from the United States Mint, including the United States Mint uncirculated set. If you look closely at the coins from an uncirculated set, they look uh, different than you would see them from the United States um, from the coins that you see in circulation. I'm going to show that with this set. This is an uncirculated set from 2006. And, uh, and, and these coins have that slight uh, matte finish to them. These are uh, matte finish nickel, dollar, half dollar, and dime. And these are specially treated um, and specially uh, produced for these mint sets. But if you look at that dime compared to a regular dime, you know, there's not a whole lot of difference in terms of its appearance. But there is a difference if you look close. This is a much better strike than you would see on a regular business strike. Same thing with the cent and the nickel here. Uh, just a sharper um, uh, collector type of finish that you find on these. So I hope that helped explain the difference between numismatic and bullion strikes. And, um, and, and that will help clear things up. Uh, really, when it's all said and done, you're paying a lot more money. Uh, and the Mint is increasing their prices literally hours from the recording of this video. Uh, many of their uh, numismatic products on their website, um, uh, most importantly, the silver uh, uh, ones, but also for the uh, clad and as well, those prices are going up uh, dramatically. And, and it's unfortunate in a way to, to, to see that happen, but I believe it's um, um, something that um, most people out there that are accumulating gold and silver are not concerned about. We're interested in the bullion strikes those prices have not changed, um, aside from earlier this year. I know for the American Silver Eagles, it did go up 30 cents in the distribu distribution to authorized purchasers. I've spoken about that in a recent video as well. But, uh, this, but the gold and silver that you buy for stacking and preserving your wealth, there is no change there. But for those of you who do um, uh, stack gold and silver... Well, I mean, there are some some of us out there, like myself, who are collectors, who like to get the proof versions. Uh, they're beautiful. They're very well uh, uh, made, and there's a, they're very high quality. They're less likely to spot or have blemishes or any kind of imperfections on them. And I think it's uh, it's nice to have examples just for your collection uh, as a as a reminder that you are preserving your wealth. And it's a, sort of a trophy. Uh, that's how I kind of look at them. These are trophies uh, to uh, the stacking community as representations that, you know, and a reward of yourself for what you do in accumulating and preserving your wealth. But when you have these types of things, you cannot expect that they are going to uh, command a huge premium on the secondary market. They are essentially for enjoyment purposes only for collectors out there. And that is why I accumulate mostly collector coins. Uh, very difficult to liquidate on the secondary market. Uh, you have to understand that when you buy them. But uh, something like a, a gold buffalo or an American silver eagle, these are highly liquid um, and uh, very easy to sell on the secondary market. And you're going to get more bang for your buck because these are going to maintain their, uh, their, their uh, intrinsic value. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope, hopefully it helped explain and clear some things up between the uh, difference between bullion and numismatic coins. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>